Hello, welcome and a very good evening and today we will do another soldering project and this time it's this thing here and it probably doesn't look like much except it will have a ton of ICs uh, namely 74 series ICs those are the original logic chips and it is actually a clock and of course we could just use any 3 cent microcontroller or something and make a clock from that. That would be way too easy. But um, this project here by Sergei Kiselev is actually a pretty nice project and it shows how all these um, different 74 series ICs work. It explains very well how you can build a clock from discrete components with very nice seven segment uh, display and everything can still be bought today from vendors like Moser or other sources except for uh, the trimmer capacitor which I had to order from eBay because those are rarely used nowadays and you have other well uh, options for for doing that kind of stuff. It's not exactly a cheap board because all the ICs are actually on each IC is maybe 40, 50 cents, but it adds up pretty quickly if you have this amount of stuff here, which is also why this is called the TTL grave or in German Das TTL Grab, which is the project name basically that Sergei gave to this board. And it's a grave because it actually looks a bit like a graveyard of chips. But of course it does something useful and it's also it looks very cool and you can explain to electronics or computer science students how these chips function and what their purpose is on this board so that's actually pretty nice um, let's get started okay so we put our board into this nice contraption so that we can easily twist and turn it and uh, we will have to swap it around at some point or take it out when we want to solder these last four ICs, but I will do all the other stuff first, um, which should be fine. I will also not use sockets, that would make it even more expensive. And these chips should be rather robust, I think. This is the uh, bill of materials at the, at the back, uh, which is useful and also a little bit of explanation. We will go through that once we have assembled the whole clock to see how it actually works. But it's very nicely explained by Sergei. So let's fire up the iron and let's get started. You just need your solder, your iron and all the components. And one more thing, I ordered three different kinds of trimmer capacitors. It says here this should be a 5 to 30 picofarad and hopefully these will work. I will measure them in the tester uh, before we solder them in place one, or that one in place and hopefully we can tweak the clock so that it runs nicely. This was a soldering marathon. There are most of the chips on there. The side ones are missing. These here are actually resistor pegs, which uh, I think for current limiting the BCD or the seven segment displays. And there are the um, uh, counters and the BCD decoders. And that's more or less it. But as I said, we will get to this in a minute. First, I need to finish this up. All the bypass capacitors are missing, the power supply and the oscillator is missing, plus the switches for setting the time. And then we still need a power supply with a barrel jack. I might, I'm not sure if I have one with five volts here. 
and if that's not the case i will probably wire up some other connector there and yeah have to see if i can get a fitting power supply here later i probably want to frame this so you can put it somewhere and use it as an actual clock with some nice uh, cover on top plexiglass or something so that you can actually take a look at this because i think that's uh, the nice thing about this clock because you can see all the discrete chips i hope i didn't do any mistakes the solder joints look good hope none of the ic's broke so let's finish this up and then try to run it <laughs> Okay, the deed is done. Here is the end product. I have some doubts if this will work. For one, my um, trimmer capacitors are pretty crummy, but the ones that were in the bomb are not in production anymore, so I ordered the three bags. I can't measure them because my component tester is not sensitive enough to measure that. Um, small capacitors it's more for testing electrolytics also one of the bypass capacitors looks different because for the very first time mauser actually uh, shipped the wrong number of components sometimes they give an extra component here or there pretty rare but sometimes they just like it's probably easier for them to give two instead of one or something but here um, it was only 15 bypass capacitors and of course I have a couple of 100 nanofarads lying around as usual plus as usual I made the same mistake Sergey always has very small footprints for the resistors I think he uses a shorter kind which were not in stock anymore so they are a bit at an angle because they are a bit too long for the for the pads I could have put them upright or something but that shouldn't hurt actually everything else was pretty easy. I also sold out um, this battery connector down here because I don't have a power supply yet and it should work off of four nickel metal hydride cells that's 4.8 volts um, so I think it should run. We can simply try it out. Let's hope it works. Something does happen and the clock seems to work um okay there was some some garbage in the hours and minutes what is the actual time it's 21 if it supports that yes it supports it's 24 hour mode 21 and 6 or something not sure if the seconds are accurate but let's turn off the lights it's actually pretty pretty gorgeous i must say yeah this is this is a nice result not sure what the battery runtime will be because this will draw quite a bit of power i guess um pretty bright plus the whole stack of ic's will also suck quite a bit of power although they are cmos so i think they only draw power when active so it's it should be better than than some other technology but it's, and that's really cool that it worked on the first try. Um, not sure what the trimmer capa capacitor is for, I guess, for calibrating the speed of the clock, I guess. I'm not going to touch this right now. I will need to run this for a couple of days from a power supply and see how much the drift is, and then maybe I can tune it. Or maybe I can even get better trimmer caps. Don't know. It seems that trimmer caps are pretty much out of favor for different components. So it's hard to get those. Um, yeah, but it's it really looks cool. It, it doesn't show up very well on the um, smartphone camera, on the iPhone camera, because it's very, very red. And yeah, that's uh, swamping out everything. Anyway, I think that's it. Um, this is a big success. 
Um, but we wanted to explain what, what the clock actually does, what all the chips are for, right? So let's let's quickly do that. So let's have a look. Um, the text says the clock uses a 32,768 hertz quartz crystal, which is this tiny metal canister over there, and a 74HC4060 counter divider. That's this I see here, which incidentally came in this lovely box. I will save this box for different ICs. I have, uh, for example, I have a bunch of uh, fifth, Commodore 1541 uh, disk drive drivers, stepper motor drivers, uh, which I might put in there because they are rarish uh, or other stuff. It's very nice when they give these kinds of packages. Most often you get these tubes, which are also fine, and sometimes I store them, but I already have a couple. I will probably save this one because it has this nice rubber plug, and you can put old ICs in there for storage. That's uh, that's pretty neat. Um, okay, so this is the, the counter divider, and that generates the 2 hertz signal from the 32768 hertz. Why do they use such a high frequency? Well, first of all, there's a power of two, so you can divide it by two to get the two hertz signal. And um, also, the higher the frequency here, and the better the crystal, the more accurate your signal, your slow signal will be, your low frequency signal. Then the signal is divided further by two using a part of a 70LS90 counter. I think that's the one... Uh, which one is it? I think the one up here, probably. Can't read the labels. No, those are the LS00. Ah, down here. Here's the row of LS90s. Um, the obtained 1 hertz signal is fed to two 74LS90 counters. Um, those are the following ones. They have two, four, six. That counts seconds. Okay, these, those are U11 and U12. Let's see. Uh, U11 and U12, those are these ones here. Those are for the seconds. Um, what does it say? Okay, and the seconds reset circuit is implemented using two 74LS00 NAND gates, U4A and U4B. Let's see, it's probably... Oh, those are the 47s. It must be this one here, U U4, yes. These are the uh, reset circuits for the seconds. The circuit resets both seconds and tens of seconds counters when they reach 60, or when second switch is pressed. Indeed, I can reset the seconds. Um, yep. The most significant bit of tens of seconds counter is fed to the minutes counter implemented using two 74LS90, U13 and U14. That should be these here, yes. Those count the minutes. Um, through a multiplexer built from three 74LS00 NAND gates, U2C, D and U4D. Uh, that should be... Oh no, those are U2 and U4. Well, ah, okay, those are the, the, the pinouts, of course, that's pin C and D, probably, of this. Ah, we should have, we should have taken the data sheets for that, but that's, I leave that as a homework. Because I actually have, um, I think I have a bunch of NAND gates here, which I didn't need. I might build from something from that, um, could be interesting. The multiplexer selects between this one pulse per minute signal and the two hertz signal, allowing setting up minutes to additional 74LS00 NAND gates, U2A and U2B, again on this chip here. Uh, implement an RS flip-flop used to debounce the minute switch. Okay, so that uh, when we click, we don't get multiple uh, key presses due to fluctuations on the signal of the switch. The tens of minutes 74LS90 counter U14 is wired so that it resets itself when it reaches count of 6. That was uh, this chip here. So that minutes wrap around at 60, which is nice. Similar to minutes, the most significant bit of tens of minutes is fed to the hours counter uh, implemented using two 
47 LS90 counters, U15 and U16, and that should be those two here, yes. So seconds, minutes and hours are these, which also means that the switches here will adjust the counters, obviously. This will reset the counter and this will advance the counter in this year as well. Um, similar to minutes, the most using two LS40 in the counter, you fit in the counter, multiplexable from the other. Okay, basically the hours are more or less the same. And there's also the debouncing is also the same for the hour switch, which is nice. And both counters are wired that they also reset themselves once they reach the count of 24. Makes sense. Um, 6, 74 LS47, 7 segment decoders, U5 to U10, which are these here for seconds, minutes, and hours, are wired in such a way that they will reset themselves once. Oh no, sorry. Uh, I used to decode the binary outputs of the counters and display the result in human readable 24 hours time format. Leaves the question what are these? These are simply resistor packs um, for the LEDs so that they are not driven with too high a current, I guess. And that's more or less it. There are a few more resistors up here for the uh, <laughs> purely aesthetical colon LEDs, I would say. You could just leave those unpopulated and just keep the net stuff. Let's actually um, try to see if the wraparound works. Oh, look at that. It's not even only single key presses, but you can use this... Uh, counter to also advance, or this, this this clock signal to advance while pressing down, which is nice. It doesn't get faster, obviously. Uh, and <laughs> we had we had the wraparound, but I actually wanted to see how you can... It's actually even debouncing while I press. So I double click and it will only advance one, so it doesn't help clicking that often, so I can just hold it down. And now we'll stop at 59, 4, 7, 8, 9. Also advance this to 23. And we will wait for this to get to 59 as well. And then we should see that it swaps to 0, hopefully. Um, yeah, let's fast forward. And here we are, and zero. Okay, the clock seems to work. Um, does anything get particularly warm? I don't think so, which means it should be working quite fine. These here seem to be a bit warmer than the others. Not sure what's up with that. These here are very cool on the left as well. Might just be my imagination, not sure. Um, yeah, but it will be interesting to see how long it, it is able to run on just the battery pack alone. However, on the long run, I will get me a 5 volt power supply. It would have been better to have just a USB socket here. Maybe I'm just gonna solder this USB socket there or rewire a USB cable maybe with a barrel jack at the end. That's probably the easiest. We'll see. But for today, that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching. I think this is a very nice thing. You can spend many more hours decoding what this thing does. You can put your oscilloscope on there and measure what the signals are, how they flow. I think this is really a good learning learning kit, um, both for soldering and for understanding how the 74 series logic actually works. Because it's simple enough um, that you can understand it and complex enough to show something very interesting, namely a clock made up of discrete components, which is lovely, I think. And it also, I think, looks pretty cool. So making a nice case for this or oh, some acrylic in front to uh, for, the, for the dust protection would be actually pretty nice. But that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. 
That would be very nice. Um, leave a like or dislike, depending on what you thought about this. And definitely leave a comment uh, with your experiences and ideas. And if you want to support my channel, as always, there's a link to Patreon, Ko-Fi or PayPal. If you can't do that or don't want to, that's fine. Just keep on watching and I hope to see you in the very next episode. So goodbye.